Good evening. Welcome to the International Focus of Rally's third virtual art show featuring the art of Africa. My name is Kazia Wafula and I will be your MC for this program. I'm a recent graduate of Meredith College in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I'm no stranger to Africa. I'm originally from Nairobi, Kenya, and came to the United States Rally through a scholarship fund dedicated to assisting girls from sub-Saharan countries to get world-class education. Now I've just graduated from Meredith College with my bachelor's, and in front of me is a world of possibilities. With the theme of the evening being, where am I from, where am I now? I can certainly relate to this artist and I'm grateful to International Focus for giving me this opportunity. The mission of IF is to promote mutual understanding between the people of, of the greater triangle area of North Carolina and the people of the world through cultural exchange, education, art, and the celebration of achievements. Tonight, we'll be taking a virtual journey to Africa and have an exciting lineup of art, music, dance, and so much more. To start things off, I'm honored to introduce to you the poet laureate of Chapel Hill, CJ Soot. We sat down with CJ to hear the inspiration be behind this touching poem, Malawi. The first poem I'm gonna do, a friend of mine brought me pictures and stories from Malawi. And she said like, can you write something in response to this? She was doing like HIV AIDS work in Malawi with a few organizations and NGOs there and brought back these stories for me. Um, well, she was doing the work on her own and brought back these stories and said, can you do something with these? Um, and I was like, oh, we'll see. And this is what came out. All it took were pictures and stories of a Malawian woman to remind me I was African. That somewhere within my erased heritage and language, there are smudges of Chichewa. Flipping through photos reminds me I was once a child. Without the awareness and resources to counter the situation I was born into, can you imagine being born into a village where survival is as predictable as coin flips and wishing wells? Well, they would be too optimistic in the picture I look into. While listening to the narrator, she is poised with clandestine confidence, masking the empty home except for a grandmother and older brother, but I saw the slave ships in her shadow saw manifest destiny in the tool she uses to farm, saw more of me in her countenance than in the mirror this morning, saw my mother in the calluses on her feet, farming peppers in Lewisburg, North Carolina, Leakness Genu, picks peanuts in Malawi, Africa. In the story I have been hearing, there is a metaphor that the people are the peanuts. Sitting beneath the surface of sympathetic soil, Malawi has a lot of medical consideration, but there are few people telling their stories. Perhaps it is too much to consider them more than patients. However, there is some debate about who is harvesting in the metaphor, whether it is the country or the virus, AIDS. I lost my cousin a year and a half ago in autumn. She never thought she would fall in love. And out of, dref, out of breath, her dreams of the big city and bright lights peaked with a high-rise love affair that now casts a shadow on her flickering life. I remember watching her lie there, too weak to lift her body, her body too fragile to break my silence. I just looked, couldn't say much of anything, but finally mustered up the courage to tell her, love you cuz, you know I'll be praying for you. There are children praying in the next picture, I pray, that God is listening, that there is not too much sin in their blood for miracles to penetrate. Hope he will not make them pay for their parents' mistakes in T-cells. You don't have to look too closely to see well that there is a motherland beaming from my follicles. My heart drums a djembe rhythm over old Negro spirituals. My skin, a combination of melanin and Malawi pigment and peanuts. It is as African as apartheid and conflict diamonds. I am as American as baseball and Obama, but by the, last, by the time I learned I was African, I was too black too present in hip hop, gospel, and R&B to notice the origin of their beats, too busy worshiping Martin to revere Mandela, and too confused to notice that I was one in the same, to notice I'm one in the same black skin, the red blood that runs through my veins, a part of a race and gender being harvested beneath the green leaves of a cash crop in a field of dreams. My motherland taught me I'm east and west hemispheres, poured into a melting pot, seared by slavery and a hot and dry heritage that curls into a question mark right around Confederate 
Confederate flags and cotton gins, there are answers in the echoes of pages from a middle passage click in photos and stories spoken about Malawi and Chichewa click in a Malawian woman's story click in an African American man's story click. I am a collage, a collection of frames and images. A threadbare patchwork quilt tattered and torn, waving in the wind. I hope you see me. The day continues always. Relief and revelation, a moment of revelry, I see you. As much as I can be seen, I remember Always the struggle of being present with a connective empathy here and now, the conversational and cultural exchange within all the sound abounding Facebook feeds, Twitter feeds, real news, fake news. <laughs> I love you. For all the reasons I love myself, I see my future drawn out in the curve of your smile. I am me, CJ person, being of sound, human, person of color, light, sound, and darkness. I am made up of all the pieces of me that don't seem to fit, an accidental quilt, an intentional mosaic. These pieces fit together. It's up to me to figure the how, the why, the when. I was born Cleveland Darnell Suit the <laughs> second, not junior. Though my name would say otherwise, my mom has always called me CJ. As in Cleveland Jr., I see you in me. Me in you, I am you. A little older, a little younger. Tu eres mi otro yo, more conservative, more independent, more liberal in the hopes to reset the clock. My mother voted for Trump. I see my life tick tock. My father did not vote participate. Does his life, voice, opinion matter? The people who are different from us are not crazy. <laughs> Let me say that again. The people <laughs> who are different from us are not crazy. They are our neighbors. They are our friends. They are our family. My mother was born here. Franklin County, my father worked in a sawmill, third world conditions in a first world context. I didn't have running water for the first five years of my life. Not so different from a city in India, a village in Haiti. I can be both bridge and border, both flood and drought, both melody and cacophony. I am black. I am American, feeling foreign most days. I am growing, I am learning. We are all 70-ish percent water, <laughs> both solid <laughs> and liquid, both bridge and the river beneath, what is above and what is below. I contain both heaven and hell. I am black president and radical sociopath, living, learning what lives. <laughs> In the surrender, sweet as it can be, how I might make this global personal, how I might make this thing mine, not to own, but to learn from, move with and through. I was born and raised in the church. I have since left. I still believe in fellowship, in forgiveness, in connectedness, in joy, both beauty and beast, the sweet release. So, why am I saying all this? I say all this because our business must be personal. We must acknowledge it begins with us. The world is not OK right now. And it needs all of our intersections to undertake the great task of healing that lies before us. All of me is here with you. You have my hands and my voice and my heart. We are better together. Let's get to work. My name is CJ Suit. I'm a poet and the Poet Laureate of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, I do poetry, I do performance art, um, a little theater, a little singing <laughs> in there. Um, I've been a poet 
most of my life I grew up in a Southern Pentecostal church, uh, watching preachers take a 2,000 year old story, wrap it up in a metaphor, and give it back to people in a way that they could apply it to their daily lives. Uh, my ancestry here on this land is dates back to West Africa. And for me, I feel that so much in my culture, a culture of expression, a culture of performance, a culture of understanding that there is a world that operates beyond what we can see, touch, hear, taste, feel. And all of that comes into my art. I believe that in many ways we experience the divine when someone is speaking to us or speaking with us uh, and we feel something when we're sitting in our seats and nothing has touched us um, physically but has touched something deeper within us and I believe that that is very connected to the African tradition, connected to an African heritage on this land and an enslaved African ancestry. It's one of the ways that we have survived through the years. And so all that gets infused into my work when I speak. I'm a very much, very much a performance poet, not just a literary or writer, but also a performance poet who believes the word should be spoken um, and believes in the power of storytelling in the oral tradition um, as it relates to my experience as a black American um, and particularly also an African American. That's about the most articulate answer I've ever heard, like, as far as, like, you nailed everything in, like, one sentence, but, like, or, <laughs> seriously, or one response. That was, that was amazing. Like, <laughs> caught me off guard. That was, uh, <laughs> usually I've got to, like, pull stuff out of people. Um, obviously you're a poet, though, so it, yeah. it so, all right, so let's talk about, then, the medium you use, so your poetry. So, yeah. like, tell me how you use your, uh, uh your art, your poetry, to bridge the gap between what you're talking about, your history, and like where you are now? As a poet, as an artist, as a performance artist in the world, it's important to me to be centered in the present, to bring forward the lessons of my ancestors while envisioning a different and better future. And so that means all of my ancestry. That means my African ancestry. That means my black rural Southern ancestry. That means all the things. That's everything from my grandma's collard greens to sadza, to different elements of African cuisine and African culture. And to bring those things through so that we can be situated in a present and understand who we are, what we are, in order to build a bigger, brighter, better, future um, and so those things are really important with me for me I also work with youth and at like being in my like 30 somethings it's really important for me to also share that message with young folks and share that message with the youth so that they also understand and can situate themselves in a present but also a past right in order to envision a future that allows the world to be more whole for them as well and so that's the core foundation of of my artwork and what I hope to do. I think that artists are visionaries. I think we are in the world envisioning realities that um, other folks have a hard time seeing as they go to work and come home and go to work and come home and pick up their kids from school and come home, right? Like as artists, we are the visionaries. Um, and, and that visionaryness, if you will, uh, comes with sort of an acknowledgement and understanding of our history that's situated in the present and helps us have a better understanding again um, in order to, to really look forward to that future. And we're grateful for your vision, CJ. Thank you, that was beautiful. Next, we're going to visit Africa. P.S. Freelon is a Durham City Council member. He's also an accomplished hip hop, soul, electronic musician, director and Emmy Award winning producer and professor from Durham, North Carolina. His work has been featured on the Today Show and at NPR, Now This, Rolling Stone, Parents Magazine, and more. For over 16 years, Pierce has traveled the world teaching hip hop and music production to youth in community centers. He is a co-founder of Beat Making Lab, 
an Emmy award-winning PBS web series, and has taught in the departments of music and African-American studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and is a writer, composer, and co-director of an animated series called History of White People in America, an official selection of the Tribeca Film Festival. Pierce is also the founder of Black Space, a digital makerspace where he has mentored dozens of youth teaching digital storytelling through music and film. Last fall, we were honored to have PS join us for our virtual global diplomacy dialogue series. It is our pleasure to introduce to you PS Freelon. Enjoy. So Beat Making Lab started as a class at UNC in the music department and um, a colleague of mine, Apple Juice Kid, along with the, I guess he was a professor at the time, he became the chair of the department, Dr. Mark Katz, uh, you know, endeavored to take this curriculum out of the classroom and into the community. And our first uh, project was in the Congo um, at a community center called Yole Africa. So initially we, we didn't have the vision or intention really to uh, to scale the program to, to what it became. It became this web series with PBS where we went all over the world to Panama, Fiji, Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, Haiti, all over the world. Um, in its infancy, it was just this innovative hip hop curriculum that we wanted to offer to a community center in the Congo. And um, our partners at Yole Africa, uh, Petna and Cherie and Deliko um, run this amazing festival every summer called uh, the, the uh, Salam Kivu International Film Festival. And Salam means peace, Kivu is the region. There, uh, you know, this, this guy Petna who, who grew up in this area in this community he created this film festival uh, where kids come from around the world, from around the country to, um, you know, to screen their films and to work on projects. And there's like a music program and, and a dance team. And so we came from North Carolina with this curriculum and just did like a week and a half, two week long residency there. And it was so enriching because, uh, you know, the kids created their own beats. They, they, they wrote their own rhymes. We shot a music video for it. And then we just put it on YouTube, you know, and, and it kind of went viral. Um, PBS, you know, got wind of what we were doing because we were written up in Good Magazine and the rest is history. They were like, yo, let's, let's create a web series out of this where you travel the world and continue to scale this work. But it all started in, in Congo and we're really grateful to uh, Dr. Sheree Indelico Rivers and Petna Indelico for uh, helping us kickstart that movement. Je j'aime trop faire le beat making parce que je suis un artiste musicien. Na ndiko na fata beat making tu kwa tena nguvu kushinda kisa kwa hapa. When I'm high I am in the studio I'm feeling like uh, I am in the event, like that because I love so much the music. Is that? Mes avertissements, mes voici un monde triste, ma bis, ma devant rap, ma je rap tellement mal, ma mais c'est du rap, ma respect tous ces gars qui m'ont fait des bruits. What's going on? This is Pierce Freeline here with the Apple Juice Kid. We're in the dusty streets of Goma, Democratic Republic of the Congo. We're about two blocks that way. We're building a beat making lab at Yole Africa. So, for those of you who don't know about the beat making lab, it was founded at UNC by Dr. Mark Katz and producer Apple Juice Kid. He's made beats for Wale, Azalea Banks, Camp Lowe, Most Def. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Now, I teach music and African studies at UNC and lead a jazz and hip hop band called The Beast. Okay, back to Congo. And so, through a partnership with a Congolese nonprofit called Yole Africa, we brought that beat making lab from Carolina to the Congo. Yole Africa is an amazing nonprofit based in the Democratic Republic of Congo that brings together break dancers, filmmakers, and youth from all over Goma. Our goal here in the Congo was to create a sustainable studio and the training for these kids to be able to make their own beats, produce their own music, and 
get their music out there. So we collaborated on the beats that they were doing. Initially, of course, it's like a crash course training, trying to get six kids making hot beats within like six days. The motivation was unparalleled. These kids really wanted to learn this and put in the work, put in the hours. <laughs> C'est que quand ils iront aux États-Unis, pour nous, ça ne sera pas une fin, ça sera plutôt une continuité ou bien un débit pour nous, afin que nous puissions apprendre d'autres artistes à créer leurs propres instrumentaux. But it can't stop here. We're collaborating with some of the world's hungriest young beat makers, starting with Congo, then we're going to Panama, Senegal, and Fiji. Each Wednesday, we'll feature music videos, tutorials, and beats. And we'll be releasing tracks for you to remix as well. If you want to see our work continue, subscribe. That was beautiful. Thank you, Pierce. African culture is a melting pot of people and culture, all helping shape its tradition music and art. Now let's look at what may have brought you here tonight, the art show. We'll see artworks influenced by the continent of Africa and hear from some of those artists. My name is Atinuke Adelike and I live in Dallas, Texas, but I was born and raised in Nigeria, West Africa. I'm currently pursuing my master's in studio art at the University of North Texas, Denton campus. My current work explores the fusion and relationship of wood and metal. I'm inspired by people and the hybridization of cultures. The idea that the past, present and future are interconnected in this never-ending helix is something I'm very intrigued by. Art is everywhere, and from Nigerian cultural perspective, is it is an inextricable part of who we are. Art is important to me because it tells our stories and fosters the connection between the past, the present, and the future. My name is Marie Louise Bennett from Raleigh, North Carolina. I was born in South Africa and immigrated to the United States when I was 14 years old. My piece in this show is entitled Know Whence You Came, Childhood Lessons. It is an installation that is made up of 117 small wooden plaques, each with a paper sentence strip mounted to it, a small vanity mirror, and a child's step stool. This work is a self-portrait in which I invite the viewer to participate. The work was inspired by two passages from the book The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. The first of those passages is quoted in the title of the piece. It's simply, No Whence You Came. The second passage is that we, with love, shall force our brothers to see themselves as they are, to cease fleeing from reality and begin to change it. My name is Wo Yemi Tupi. I'm in Nigeria, I'm born. American trained artist working and living in the United Kingdom. I'm, my, I'm from Yoruba land. I'm a Yoruba man and I'm a Christian. I like to use my work to exhibit my culture and my Christian faith wherever I go around the world. Um, my, the theme of my work is the facts of life, roses and thorns. When I do painting of important people I like I do not like, like to copy nature the way I see it or copy photograph. I like to use what I see to create my own idea world in whatever I, I painted. Like I, I use um, the Adam and Eve in this painting. I use rose and thorn. Adam I mean, Adam and Eve as a rose and before, because of their problem from the fall of human being to re redemption, I favor most of the work of Renaissance artists, but I'm more influenced by the surrealist artists like uh, 
Davada Dale. So, um, in, in one shot, I would like to, I appreciate the honor to take part in the future artist exhibition that's happening in November 15. Thank you. Hello from Southern California. My name is Helen Ellis and I'm one of the artists uh, that is honored to be a part of the International Art Show of Raleigh, focusing on art from those who have African heritage. My artwork uh, primarily focuses on portraiture. I have three pieces in the current show, Chinue, Kamal, and the Black Panther tribute. It's my honor to have my work showcased in this way, and I'm so glad for the opportunity to share my work with you all, and I hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Kemi Yemi Essay, and I'm an artist residing in Austin, Texas. I'm honored and humbled to be a part of the International Art Show that's featuring the artwork focused on African art. I am Nigerian American, so my heritage plays a heavy part in the way that I paint and the symbols that I use in my artwork. I do as much as possible to use materials and use imagery that focus on my family life, that focus on my experience as being an African, even living in America. I hope that you enjoy the work and I hope that you are inspired and your imagination is sparked by the work that you see. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Monica Mies. I'm a Brazilian artist who likes to paint my country's history and its social environment. Brazil is a country of a multicultural roots, and that's why it is so rich culturally. The project that I'm about to talk is about a Brazilian folklore, and it was made in partnership with the Brazilian musician Tino Gomes. He made an entire CD for that project. Catopezeira, the sound of color. It's a collection of 22 oil paintings that commemorate a traditional Brazilian um, celebration called Catope. Catope is a ritual of folkloric expression influenced by African culture that has been in existence in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil, for over 180 years. It came from the Congada, that is also an old tradition from Minas Gerais. The paintings in the collection show groups of men, women, and children carrying drums and tambourines and wearing white clothes and rich decorated hel helmets. The paintings show dancers moving and playing through the city streets in praise of the Catholic saints of Lady of Rosary, Divine Holy Spirit, and San Benedict. Throughout this project, Tino Gomez and I wish to keep alive the color, the sounds, and the spirit of Afro-Brazilian influence in its history. We also want to remind Brazilians about our diverse and multicultural roots that bind us together as a united country. Through my art, I also want to show my culture to the entire world, so it can be always alive. Thank you. In Bosambo Bonisi, Siana Dalouina, Pignolo Bande, Amakiana. Mukanda o bakaka Balimba nate na subu Nimele so man matila kutuna dibe mungenge
Wonderful. For more information on this works of art, please go to www.internationalfocus.org. Now I'd like to introduce Carrie Heisey. Carrie is the Executive Director of Design for Joy, a nonprofit in Raleigh, North Carolina. Design for Joy is a transitional work experience for women coming from trafficking, homelessness, time in prison, overcoming addiction, or other vulnerable situations. They provide living wage work hours while building confidence and refreshing resumes. They're launching equipped women into the marketplace. Let's hear how Design for Joy got started from Kari. I've been doing international mission work leading women's teams for eight or nine years. Um, we had been partnering with artists and groups, um, financially and prayerfully supporting them. And for years I was asking God, what do you want me to do with this? You want me to put this product on a website? Or um, It just never seemed like the right thing at the right time. But it was in Rwanda two years ago um, where I saw my friend Jane. Um, she had taken 30 women um, and given them a safe, dignified job they have been working together for two years. And it was a work platform that I knew that we could recreate at home. And two months after we, our return from Rwanda, we started Design for Joy. Hey, okay. When I sit down at the sewing machine with another woman, it's, it's a common language. Um, I was able to hear um, work with a sewing machine that just is based off foot pedal and no electricity. And that was new for me. So. The artist was able to teach me something new, and that was a whole lot of fun. 
I feel like God is a big God when I can go across the world and sit down at a sewing machine next to another woman and share that skill. Um, I just think it's amazing. Design for Joy is going into uh, our third year and it was the perfect time to grab a handful of friends who are mission-minded and also um, understand the value of fair trade to come back um, where the birth of Design for Joy um, happened to meet Jane um, and see where my vision came from and uh, hopefully come home and be inspired to do bigger and better things in our community through this experience. Global mindset is one of our values at Design for Joy. Um, we have traveled the world um, with the mission to inspire other women's groups, um, but really we're the ones who come home um, even more inspired. Um, and for Jane, she inspired what is now a half million dollar business, our nonprofit downtown in Raleigh. And yeah, we want to continue our relationship with her. She doesn't rely on us solely for wholesale, uh, but we order from her two or three times a year. Baskets, um, handmade tea towels, um, fabrics from the fabric market. Um, that keeps our relationship. We've, we've visited with her again since we met her the, the first time. I mean, I think we have a responsibility to share our resources, our friends, our finances, our business know-how, um, and we're happy to partner alongside of her as, as long as we can. So in Design for Joy, we, we carry some of Jane's products and artisan things that she has. Um, but we put this large order of baskets and tea towels in, and with that money, she was able to sign a lease for a new location to serve more women and in a more unique uh, a way. Um, so we are excited to see that while we're building a second location here in Raleigh, we're also helping to build and support another studio for women in Rwanda. Thank you, Carrie. That was wonderful. Now let us introduce to you a few special guests, Ivy Birch, Bradley Simmons and Toya Chinflu from the African American Dance Ensemble in Durham. Hi, good evening, Toya and Ivy. So I'm going to just ask you a series of questions. Um, tell me about yourselves and what you do. I am currently a teacher of dance for Durham Public Schools, as well as a adjunct professor at North Carolina Central University, um, which is one of the positions that Bob and Chuck Davis held. Um, this, I'm teaching one of the courses he actually established, which is an honor, very much an honor. And I dance with the company whenever I have the opportunity and the offering. You a member? Oh, of course, I'm a member of the company for life. <laughs> I'm a member for life. And I am Ivy Birch. I am one of the founding members with the Chuck Davis African American Dance Ensemble. Um, I have been performing for over 30 years. I am currently um, as, on staff at Duke University. Um, and I too am an instructor at the Haiti Heritage Center. Um, and I teach African dance um, in one of the studios that has been named after Baba Chuck Davis. And so we're continuing to carry that legacy. Um, I am just honored and I give thanks to God for the gifts and talents that he has bestowed upon me to help to share and mold this world into a better place. Well, thank you so much. We're glad to have you here today. So the theme for the evening is where am I from? Where am I now? In terms of your history or your ancestors history, what do you think about this? For me, um, I feel that I am from a place of royalty. Um, Africa is the motherland um, where um, life began. And so for me, that's a place of royalty, a place of honesty, respect, um, just the wealth of knowledge. Um, it's my being. Um, and I feel that being from such a place with such a rich culture 
Um, it has allowed me to be in the space that I am today, again, to share our rich traditions and history of Africa, because coming up as a child, we were thought, we were made to believe that Africa was this barbaric, barbaric place um, and no um, person with intelligence lived in that part of the world. And so um, I just want people to know that it is a rich and royal um, culture. Mm -hmm. And where I am today is because of where I have come from. I can certainly relate to that. <laughs> what about you, Maria? Where am I from and where I am now? I am from New Jersey originally, but at this point I've been in the South in Durham for more, longer than I've been from New Jersey. Um, I learned about Baba Chuck while I was a student in college in New Jersey. And I intentionally came to Durham, North Carolina to meet him, just to meet him, um, not knowing that he would become like a father to me, um, not knowing that he would be a grandfather to my children and a mentor and, and set me up to know my history, my culture and have such a great appreciation for my life. So where I am now is with great appreciation and much more knowledge and understanding of my connection as a northerner to the south and as a person to the African diaspora. And my mission is to continue to show children who he is, Baba Chuck, and what he has taught me and to share that same teaching with the new generations to come. That's right. Thank you so much, Taya. Uh, what would you like the takeaway be for someone watching this event tonight? For me, there is no I, there's always we. You never look down on a person unless you're helping them up. And so I just would like the takeaway to be that um, united we stand, divided we fall. That's what I like that, that is good. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. My takeaway, I would say, um, I really like what um, Ivy just said. We're here in spirit. It's yes. The, same, um, <laughs> the more we, I learn, the more I understand that we are. Like Baba used to tell me, uh, tell us all, I am because you are, because yes. you are, I am. And because you are, we are. Yes. And then he would go through a series of superlatives that were all positive affirmations. Um, and the more we learn, I seek to learn, I seek to understand that the contributions made by African heritage go deep and wide. And um, those that watch today or whenever they do view this, I hope they're inspired not to be afraid to seek out other cultures because the more you learn about others, the more you gain insight to yourself. And I would just like wow. to add one thing about the African-American Dance Ensemble. I look at all of the members, um, as Baba Chuck would say, we are dancers of peace. Mm -hmm. And so we hope to spread and continue spreading peace, love, and respect for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that is the main goal of the African-American Dance Ensemble. Um, it's infectious. Mm -hmm. you know? And we love that message of peace, love, and respect. And so try you know if you don't try you never know what you could accomplish and that's one thing that baba chuck did instill in the african-american dance ensemble well that's beautiful i love that peace love and respect um is there anything else you'd like you'd like to add tonight as toya said i am because you are and you are because we are mm -hmm. and we are fabulous loving Awesome, generous, respectful, inspiring. And we are awesome beyond the county the line. County line. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Barbara Bradley. Hi, Bradley. 
Could you tell us a little bit more about the instrument you're going to play today? Okay, this this instrument I have in my hand is called the shakere, and it's spelled S-H-A-K-E-R-E, or you can spell it C-H-A-K-E-R-E, and that's pronounced differently with a C-H. They pronounce it shakere. Uh, uh, the shakere is made out of a gourd, which is known as a squ uh, squash. As it's grown, it's a fruit. It's actually a fruit that you can eat but not now because it's dried out. But before that, when it grows out of the ground uh, and it's green, and yeah. uh, you can cut it and eat it and make whatever you want to make out of it. But in order to make it a gourd, you have to cut the top off. Okay. Here, okay. And then clean out the inside. Yeah. There's a lot of seeds on the inside that you got to clean out and let it dry. So when it dries, it will dry to this formation here and it will turn this color. Yeah. Once you do that, then you have to clean the outside out, okay? Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff on the outside that needs to be cleaned off. And um, a lot of times what uh, the guys, mo most players do, they'll, they'll put uh, polyurethane on it to give it a shine or give it a coat on the outside and the inside so that the sound can come out much stronger. So... Is, you, hear, you hear, I don't know if you yeah. can hear it, but there's a bass sound on the inside. Okay, so you want that that note to come out, all right? And you want it to come out clear. So the way to do that is make sure everything that's on the inside of this board is clear and cleaned out. And then you put that polyurethane in there that gives it more of a bri vibrant sound. Now, on the outside, it's covered with beads. Uh, you can use plastic beads or... You can use um, glass beads, mm -hmm. or you can use cowrie shells. Like this one here has cowrie shells on it. Wow, that's okay? beautiful. So you can use it. You can make it with this way, or you can make it with glass beads. Mm -hmm. uh, glass beads are good. It, the sound is much brighter, but it's a little bit heavier. Plastic beads and, and cowrie shells are a lot lighter, so it makes it easier to play. But if, if you can handle glass beads, I've got a few gourds with glass beads on it, so I can handle it. But uh, it does have weight on it. Weight on it. Uh, so you got to be careful which, what type of beads you want to put on your gourd to yeah. make it easier for you to work with. Okay. Uh, so this, this actual design is called macrame. So you use, uh, you use uh, the macrame is the way it's, it's uh, strung out with the diamonds in here. Or the, mm -hmm. or the box formation, and you can put as many bees on it as you want, and you get that sound. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can play different rhythms. You can play it in six eight timing, or you can play it in four four timing. So Bradley, tell me about yourselves and what you do. Okay, <clears throat> I'm Bradley Simmons, and I'm from uh, Brooklyn, New York. I uh, started out playing. Uh, drums and tap dancing at eight years old uh, at the Gloria Jackson School of Dance in New York. And um, I've been playing for now a total of 61 years. Um, I did a lot of uh, work in New York. I did a lot of Broadway uh, while I was up there. And uh, then I left New York in 93 and came down to uh, North Carolina to uh, work with Chuck Davis Dance Company.
That was amazing to watch. We really appreciate that Ivy, Bradley, and Toya. We can see the joy on your faces in that performance. And thank you to all who are featured here tonight. This has been an incredible evening, and I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you to our artists and to you, our guests. We hope you enjoy this show and that you will support International Focus. The best way to do that is to donate, become a sponsor or a member, and attend live events when things are back to normal. You can find all of that information and more by visiting their website, www.internationalfocus.org. Have a great evening and thank you.
Sungi sungi bali koe di kambo na mate mai ngai na mate ma uru para kileba chule no dutua oh na makamu
bagne de l'eau On ne jamais Ne me l'allez Go. Oh. 